Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 1971 Italian giallo film, The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward. Now, I posted in, an, in a uh, Facebook group that I have for horror uh, about the dump of giallo films that are coming up by Shudder in December of 2020, which I'm obviously very excited about. If you didn't know, I love giallo films. Very, very interested in that. I even have a playlist on my channel of all giallo films I've reviewed, and I'm going to keep that going, obviously. So I was excited about that. So I posted and I was asking people, what are some of your favorite giallo films? And The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward came up a bunch, actually. So I made sure to check it out because it's when I'm posting this, it's already on Shutter. It's been on Shutter for a bit. I was interested in seeing it already, but then when people were saying that they liked it so much, it made me hurry up. Now, I will say that when I was watching this film, for quite a while, I was like, okay, it's decent, it's okay, it's okay. Um, and I was kind of a little bit disappointed with, you know, how much people said about it. But um, once I got to the end, to those twists, I was like, this changes pretty much everything about the film. And I really enjoyed it. And, I mean, that's kind of how it is with Giallo films in general. Like, it's all about the twist at the end. It's all about the reveal of... You know, what's the whole situation here? Who's the gloved killer? Uh, in this case, wielding the straight razor, which a lot of times is a straight razor, sometimes knives. But yeah, so good payoff on this. And that is your warning that I will be talking spoilers, obviously, because it's an old film. So this is directed by Sergio Martino, who's done such films as The Case of the Scorpion's Tale, All the Colors of the Dark, which I have seen that, but I don't... I, I think I've reviewed it, actually. I think it's on my channel. Uh, your Vice is a Locked Room and Only I Hold the Key. Torso, which is another one a lot of people said is great. The Suspicious Death of a Minor, The Scorpion with Two Tails, and American Rickshaw. Uh, just some of the films that Martino's done. Actually, I think this is only the second Sergio Martino film I've ever seen, but I'm hooked. I'm in because I liked um, All the Colors of the Dark as well, so I need more of this. Uh, written by Eduardo Manzanos, who did scripts for The Case of the Scorpion's Tale, Night of the Devils, and a lot of Italian Western films, because that was a phase. Ernesto Gastaldi, who wrote scripts for The Vampire and the Ballerina, Werewolf in a Girl's Dormitory, The Whip and the Body, The Case of the Scorpion's Tale, All the Colors of the Dark, The Case of the Bloody Iris, Your Vice is a Locked Room and Only Eye of the Key, Torso, The Suspicious Death of a Minor, and The Scorpion with Two Tails. So that's a lot. And that's a lot of collaboration with these two with Sergio Martino. So I'm very interested to check a bunch of those out. Now this was originally released as Blade of the Ripper, which I think that's a better title, especially nowadays. Um, but it's also known as Next or The Next Victim. I think Blade of the Ripper was probably a better title. The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward, I don't like for the fact that it's pointing at Julie Ward in this as, like, a sex maniac. I mean, that is what's going on, is that she's basically addicted to being an adulterer, in essence. And uh, nowadays, it's not a good look to do that in a film, because her character's kind of thin, at least until the end, where she kind of gets her revenge. But she's just damsel in distress type, you know. And she's just motivated by sex, which makes her a very one-dimensional character. But you don't watch Giallo for the characters so much. You watch Giallo for the mystery and the reveal of the mystery at the end and the kills. That's another thing. And some the kills were pretty solid in this, I will say. Uh, the biggest payoff is the end of the film. I uh, love the twisting and turning of it, which I did not see coming. That's the big plus. I didn't see any of that stuff coming, which is great. Uh so this was Sergio Martino's first Giallo film, believe it or not. Uh, he had plenty after that, and I'm very excited to get to go, get to those. The spelling of Ward in the uh, title was originally just W-A-R-D. They ended up having to put an H at the end because a woman with the last name Ward actually threatened to sue because she didn't want to have her name associated with it, basically. Uh, I, I would see why, because back then in the 70s, this woman being so uh, sexually active and sexually forward in the film, I see why she wouldn't want her name associated, because of the time period. Probably be very different nowadays, but 
Uh, the film was denied distribution in the UK until an uncut version was actually released in 2011. So that is a long time before they actually let it in the UK. But as I've talked about a few times in reviews, uh, doesn't surprise me. The UK banned so many films and it's ridiculous. Just ridiculous. I'm glad things have been fixed with that. The film has a seedy feel when it starts uh, because of the backseat view that you get with the guy driving and basically cruising prostitutes for his next victim. And then it takes it to that next level of just of just being going from just being seedy to being downright gruesome and violent and intense. Like it, it becomes a lot to handle because the killing actually happens. You know, the woman gets naked in the car and then she's immediately slashed up. And you're just like, whoa, okay, we just, we went full throttle with this, we jumped right into it. So I, it grabs your attention for sure, and that's important with these films. Uh, the quote in the beginning of this film that comes on the screen is by Sigmund Freud, and I wrote it down. The very emphasis of the commandment, thou shalt not kill, makes it certain that we are descended from an endlessly long chain of generations of murderers, whose love of murder was in their blood, as it is perhaps also in ours. And I think this is just kind of there to signal that it could be anyone in this film who is the murderer, or in the end, who is one of three murderers, because that's who ended up being involved. You know, Neil, Jean, and George were all in cahoots with this. Like I said, I did not see it coming, and I love that twist to it of them coming together. And also the fact that uh, there are a lot of Giallo films where the motivation of the killer has to do with hating women or having some sort of trauma in their past or something like that. It's been done so much. So it was so cool to see that with this one, that wasn't the case. This was actually about financials. Literally, you know, Jean wanted a cut of the money that was being offered by Neil. Uh, and Neil wanted his wife gone with, which um, I think was a big part because of her philandering. So that, I guess that does kind of get to the hating women thing, it, but just that particular woman, basically. But he also, I think there was something mentioned about their kind of, um, him potentially thinking they might end up getting divorced and he wouldn't want to have to pay a large portion of his fortune to her. And then obviously George had the motivation of wanting his uh, I think it was cousin Carol out of the picture, who Neil was the one who killed Carol for him, and that worked out for him, so that's how he got involved in everything. Uh, seems like they're using any excuse for nudity in the film. They get to nudity quick and, and often in the film. Uh, so much nudity. One of the prime examples that made me write that down was the scene at the party where um, Julie first meets George, when the women are wearing kind of like, I don't know, it looks like, aluminum foil outfits basically and the one the guy i think it was george like rips one off partially off the woman and then the other woman who has one on rips it off the other woman and they just start fighting and rolling around naked on the floor there's a lot of nudity in this and it seems like it was just in there for the sake of nudity which probably one of the reasons the uk was like don't think so um but yeah it's just something that struck me but you you know you have to remember that back during this time period, that was a selling point for films, especially horror films, because pornography wasn't available the way it is now. So that was more of a drive for men to check these things out back then. With all the dreams Julie has of rough sex with Jean, it seems they're painting the two as lovers on the edge of sexual sanity. Uh, it plants the seed that Jean could easily take to a take that additional step to being the killer that they're talking about. And this is one of the smart things, not just of the film, but of what George and Neil and John do in the film, which is they use the backdrop of this ripper, you know, this, this killer who's out there, to cast suspicion on the deaths, to lump it in with that killer and say, this is what's going on redirect you here and one of the brilliant things i think with the way the film is done is that sergio martino and the writers use did exactly to the audience what neil george and john did to everyone else in the film which is direct your attention away from the actual perpetrators and towards this killer who was out there who ends up getting killed in the film, which becomes a very confusing part of it because you're just like, was that 
who it was because if so they showed his face pretty early on there's a lot more left in the film i don't understand what we're doing here um but then it's all revealed and in very awesome fashion in my opinion i i enjoyed it uh the shot of the killer leaving after the girl's throat is slit in the shower is great uh, it's that cool kind of POV shot from her where she's tumbling down in the shower because her throat's been slit and she's dying, but she's seeing a glimpse of the killer leaving as that's going on. That's awesome. So, you know, that makes you realize that you're seeing basically two things in the film going on. You're seeing the plot that Neil, George, and John have put together play out, but then you're also seeing glimpses of this actual killer who ends up meeting his maker at one point. And that's, once again, done to misdirect the audience to great effect. But I love that shot, that POV shot of her, you know, tumbling back. It looks realistic. It, it's, it's a great POV shot. And there's a bunch of good POV shots in this film, actually, uh, especially like the killer POV, which is common in these giallo films, but it works so well. It works unbelievably well. And I'll talk, I think, about a few more I think I have in my notes. Uh, I wrote, how about George? Uh, his quote, my specialty is courting women in the presence of their husbands. I thought that, <laughs> that was a funny uh, quote. It struck me. I'm like, man, this guy is bold. But then you realize, you know, it's, there was, there are no repercussions for him to actually say that because if that information got back to Neil, in the end, we understand he was in cahoots with Neil. Neil put him up to going after her and getting her to, you know, come over to his place and have sex so that Jean could be outside creeping on them and then blackmail her. So, you know, the POV motorcycle shots are cool. That was another thing. There's POV. Once again, POV and this is great. They really convey George's reckless driving quite well. That's when Julie was on the back of the motorcycle as George is like whipping around turns on the road and stuff, how they shot it of her POV. It, it gave you the idea of what she was going through and how recklessly he was driving and how fast too. So that very effective. So it's Julie's vice of sex with men who are not her husband that starts all the trouble for her. Um, and you would probably, I mean, I would probably argue that it doesn't start in the film. It's something that she's had a history of, which is what they lay out here, which, you know, it's a very simplified thing of women. But once again, like I said, you got to remember the time period of when this came out. You always have to when you're watching films. They talk about Jean so much and cast suspicion on him so much that you feel like it's certainly not him killing the women, which this is another one of those smart things about the script, which is Jean is referred to so much. And if you know about Giallo films, you know there's, there's always misdirections. So it makes you think, okay, they're, they're banging this drum on Jean so hard because they want you to think that it's Jean. So I'm now going to think it's not John. And then you think even further that it's not him when he's found dead by Neil and Julie, which you then find out was, you know, they staged it and he was actually alive. So that's the brilliance of it is that they make you, they say so much that it's him and he actually is involved that you think it's not him. And then the death thing, it you know, takes it home even further and then come to find out he's not even dead. He's involved in this. And it's just like, oh man so good the scene with carol in the park does a good job of building and maintaining tension through the camera work secluded setting and gradually creeping darkness that's another thing they did a good job of changing the lighting you know i don't know if they actually shot during different portions of the day and that was natural lighting that was doing that or if they changed things somehow but the fact that over the span of that scene it it gradually gets darker and that helps with when it you know it's building tension it's getting darker there's barely anyone around you're seeing the killer pov shot you're seeing the pov of carol kind of going through a bit of a maze in this park and it just ratchets the tension up until the finale basically of her getting killed by neil we find out uh love that scene though it's a good one I love the lurking camera work in the garage, the parking garage that follows Julie. Uh, and the way it follows Julie is so good, especially where it's she's walking and she's in the light um, down one of the uh, I, uh, lanes of the parking garage. And the camera's on the other side of parked cars in the dark, like tracking her on the side. It just looks great. And it gives you that feeling of a 
a, a dude creeping on her, like watching her and moving along with her and stalking her. It's great. As soon as they pulled up on Jean's place, I knew they were going to end up finding him dead. But like I said, we find out, not real. Uh, when the guy with the razor gets killed, I knew it was too early for that to be him. It had to be a copycat. So I did put that little aspect of it together. I was like, this is not actually the killer, especially because he was killed so early on and they showed his face so early on. Uh, but I didn't know where they were going to go with it. I thought maybe it was George. For a while, I was like, I think it might be George. And then for a while, I thought, I think it is Neil. So I was kind of right, but very far off from what the actual storyline was. Uh, which actually, that reminds me, makes me kind of want to watch the movie a second time so I can view it through the lens of the cooperation that was going on and the master plan as it was unfolding. There's a cool reveal when you see it, John, uh, who ends up chloroforming Julie. That's when you first see that he's not actually dead. That was a great reveal. They go up to his face and you're just like, wait, what? How did this happen? And then you're like, oh, he faked his death, I guess. Uh, that ice cube in the lock, uh, in the lock trick is very slick. The one that that uh, Jean does when he's trying to set up the scene to make it look like Julie's killed herself, which ends up backfiring in the end because they fake her death. The police do, um, but the fact that she gets that um, that he gets that ice cube and puts it in the lock so that when he leaves, it gets slick enough from the melting water and then just falls out and it makes it look like it's locked from the inside. That's cool. Um, every All the steps that he went through to kind of set that scene up, I thought were really well thought out and I thought worked really well in the film. The heartbeat sound during that is amazing. Uh, as Julie is like kind of waking up and then she's, she's also, you can tell she's dying because the heartbeat when she wakes up is kind of fast and then it starts slowing down as the uh, gas is getting to her, the carbon monoxide is getting, or it's the, yeah, the carbon monoxide's getting to her and about to kill her. Her heartbeat's slowing down. It's slowing down, slowing down. So you can really, like, you can tell as they're flashing over to George and the doctor coming to, you know, save her eventually, you can tell where she is, like how close she's getting to death. So I think that was a very smart way to play that scene and it's a it's an auditory way to do it which not a lot of people would have thought to do that so i love it once again solid twist really good twist with neil george and john working together uh i didn't see it coming especially when they took the focus off of the blackmail so much because that's something get, that gets thrown in when you know the person outside who we find out i guess was john watching julie have sex with george she then gets a call about the blackmail well, I feel like they did a good job of moving on from that so that you forget that someone was actually trying to blackmail her. So you don't really think, at least I didn't, think down that train of thought. Kind of weird with Neil and George laughing and swerving in the car at the end. That's a weird scene. That's a scene that I'm just like, I don't, what? I, I, I don't get it. I, I, I just don't get it. It's just weird. It's wacky. It's super wacky. We could do without that. Uh, once again, I, I want to say this again. I already said this, but I want to say it again. The filmmaker uses the misdirection of the killer on the loose to fool the audience, just like Neil, George, and John did. And I love that fact that what the killers are doing and the guys involved in this conspiracy are doing is exactly what the director is doing to the audience. Just genius. The film is pretty slow and a bit meandering, actually. So this is one of my big negatives with the film but the end is so crazy and so interesting and well pulled off that it's definitely redeemed as you can tell because i really like the film uh for that reason now that said because it is so slow and meandering and i think a lot of the scenes kind of get drawn out too much there's so much focus on the nudity at times and it doesn't add anything to the film really at least story-wise even though i talked about why i understand it's in there so in the end, with a possibility of five stars and half stars in play, I'm going to give it a four-star rating, a very solid four-star rating. I thought about going four and a half. I was between four and a half and four, but I think because of the slowness of it and because of a lot of meandering to it, I'm going to knock it down to the four, but no, if I gave quarters, it would be 4.25 for sure. And I did consider that four and a half. I was right there on the edge. So anyway, would love to hear people's opinions on this film. Put comments down there. 
Uh, did you love it? Did you hate it? In between, whatever. Also, if you want, you can also put down Jalo recommendations for me because I'm obviously taking those. Uh, but know that the ones that are coming to Shutter, I will be watching and reviewing all of them, hopefully. That's my plan. Uh, I'm going to have to hustle on that, but I really want to because I love Giallo. But anyway, do me a quick favor if you can. Hit that subscribe button because that is the best way to repay me. If you like any videos I have ever done, this one included. Um, literally takes you a second and it's very, very painless. And it does mean a lot to me personally. I really appreciate that. Trying to grow things here. But uh, also hit the notification bell if you're going to do that. Because then that way you know when I'm putting up new review videos or unboxing videos or doing live streams or any other videos I may do. But regardless, I do appreciate you taking your time to watch this. And until next time, keep it brutal.